And we're live here at the Cast at Glocker, which you can see on Glocker Realty and Insurance on Facebook and Glocker Realty Insurance on YouTube. That eyeball is up, Jeff. That means that we're going to start getting people watching here soon. So maybe you want to do the intro to the intro. All right. Like Matt said, we're here live. The Cast at Glocker is live at the um, Boyertown Area Historical Society. We're in their library, as you can see all the books here where you can get lots of information. But tonight we're gonna to be talking about the Mighty Adam. So stick around. If you don't know who the Mighty Adam is, you'll find out. Um, we're gonna just do our intro and we'll be back in just a minute. This is the cast at Glocker. Here, we'll both try a side. Okay, right? and we're live. We're kind of goofing around with some of the props from the uh, show. So, uh, Jeff. Yeah, I did, I mean, off off camera, I just bent some metal to show everybody how strong it was. Your workout program's going very well. So, anyway. Over at Bear's Den Fitness, That's maybe? right, that's yeah. right, yeah. Mm. So anyway, Matt and, and I are here with uh, Luann Zambonini. Right. All right. And Rachel Keller. Yep. All right. I got that right. And Ed Miller. That was an easy one. And we're here to talk about a few few items tonight. And we're going to start off with the mighty Adam. Uh, he's a strong man. He's um, known throughout the area. And uh, we're also going to talk about a um, bar, uh, Bears Mill in Boyertown. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But we're going to start off with the Mighty Adam story. So let me ask you guys, for those who don't know who the Mighty Adam is, I, I only know a little bit. Uh, tell us about the Mighty Adam. Well, if you grew up in this area in, I would say, the 60s, the 70s, Zerns was the place to go on Friday and Saturday night. Zerns because, is always the place to go. Well, yeah, that's true. Till the end. <laughs> um, but the Mighty Adam would be there. He would be selling his product. But to get your attention, he would be doing strongman things. And So what I, kind of product was he selling? Um, he would sell soap, all natural soap that was good for you and um, wouldn't hurt you in any way. He would demonstrate by, he had this long beard, long gray beard, and he would put it all over and then he would take it off his beard and he'd eat it so you know it was like healthy and um it was quite an interesting Yum. feat there yeah um he also had something called i think it was called pepilax and it would help clean out your system we'll just say that okay but um yeah he was very really into natural things he didn't like all these extra stuff you put in so he did everything natural and he kind of did all the metal stuff to catch people's attention and then he could sell you, he could have probably sold you a car or whatever. Now, when you say metal stuff, can you tell us what the metal stuff um, was? He would bend horseshoes, um, like we had an example there. Uh, he would he would bite nails. He would bite um, chains, which I, so, I don't think you'd ever want to try that. But um, So this yeah. used to be a horseshoe. That used to and be it, a horseshoe. And he twisted it. He actually didn't do that. That was something that. Um, which we can get into later. Mm -hmm. One of the people that learned from the people that learned from him has done it, but he did the same type stuff. He would right. bend big spikes. Oh yeah, he would. Unbelievable the strength he had, and he was only this tiny little five foot four guy. Did did he rip phone books? Because I, I that's a story I, I heard from I my family that has don't seen. Don't remember anybody telling me that. Um, the guy that has learned from. Um, Slim the Hammer had learned from the Mighty Adam, and Tom Kelly had learned from Slim, and he rips phone books. Okay. He rips a deck of cards in 
quarters. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't even think I could rip three cards. Matt can do that with his teeth. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah. that's good. No, the mighty Adam also did things like um, he would uh, pull trucks and with his hair. He would stop airplanes from taking off by attaching him to his no, hair. Yes, well, yes. he only did that one time. One time, yeah. It, uh, did, did his beard rip off? Well, no, that was with, so his, with hair. his hair. His hair, hair, yeah, his hair. In the book, it's the hair like that head. it almost killed him. It actually detached all the skin from oh. his face. So he only did it one time, and later on, another strong man attempted to do it, and he said, "Don't, it's too dangerous." And the guy did it, and it killed him. Mm. Does, so. do, do you know if anybody ever did it since? Yeah, there's some other. I, I in researching the show, yeah. there are some other strong men that have attempted that feat as well. But in if you look, uh, if you look the mighty Adam up, you can see a whole list of these different pictures of him performing these stunts and um, feats of strength. I guess is right. better. Oh. Yeah, biting through chains, biting through nails, bending metal, stopping trucks from driving away with his hair. His son Jerry actually was on America's. Got talent. Jerry's brother. Oh, I'm sorry. The brother. Mike. I think it was yes. Mike. Um, when he, do you remember how old he said? Uh, he was he pulling he was like something? Nine, yeah, a car, a car. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. With yeah. several people sitting in the back of the car. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it was 90 something. Yeah, because um, when we talked to Jerry, he said, my, uh, this might not be the exact ages, but he said, my brother was 95, so I'm going to wait till I'm 96, and then I'm going to do the same stunt. You know, oh yeah, it was the again. old. It was the really old guy, right? Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah I remember that. Yep. And yeah. that was the mighty Adam's son. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, that's um, a cool connection. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think we had. I gave you the picture. You can, um, I'm not sure when they're going to show it with all his sons, and each of them were strong men. And I have uh, an advertisement where the mighty Adam was going to be pulling three, seven. We'll pull three seven passenger cars by his hair. Now, when we talked, when we met Jerry, which was his youngest son, um, he told us that, or he told me, I don't know if you were still there, that his dad, when he was like one and two, like starting to walk, his dad would grab him by his hair and lift him up. And he said he was, he was strengthening his scalp. <laughs> <laughs> so he could do a car late, later or something. Yeah, because like you want your children to be always better than you, right? Isn't that the right thing? So well, when can... Jerry was telling us that, and, and when I'm saying Jerry, it's the mighty Adam's son. Yeah, right. Who was in the Boyer 10 area. He was telling us that when they were at family reunions, he thought like everybody always bent horseshoes and stuff because all his brothers did, his dad did. Yeah, right. So I guess so. Like, I thought every family reunion did that. And he was like surprised when he went to something else and they didn't do that. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> my, my family has a history of doing feats of strengths at our family reunions and everything. Too. That's how you bent this yeah. bar here. I, exactly. I did, yeah. I didn't want to do it on camera because I don't, I'll, I'll save it for you. You don't want to show them up. Actually, yeah. I kind of wanted people to pay to see it. So, okay. Yeah. And yeah. this is free. We are always looking for fundraiser. Oh, yeah, right. So maybe we can hire you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So tell us about the fundraiser that you do have going on, because there's a fundraiser that's happening in conjunction with a couple of other organizations here okay. in Boyertown. So let's get into that so people can learn more about what's going on, and then they'll be able to learn more about the Mighty Adam, right? Right, exactly. Um, we are having this Sunday afternoon um, at the State Theater. We've joined with them and with the Boyertown Vehicle Museum. Three of us got together. We have uh, a documentary about the Mighty Adam, which his grandson wrote, which I look at it, well, we know this is all going to be true because the grandson wrote it and directed it and everything. And we're going to have uh, your entrance fee of what, $25 will get you the ticket to go into the movie theater, which the movie starts at 4 o'clock. The doors open at 3.30. After the movie... You will be able to go down to the vehicle museum with your ticket. They're going to let you in. You can check it out there. We're going to have refreshments down there. You're going to be able to see the Mighty Adams truck. And also in the Mighty Adams truck, there is a box of the Mighty Adams hair. And you're probably really? thinking like, yeah, really. But that was one thing when I was talking to different people about the Mighty Adam, that was one thing everybody, I think, told me. He would comb his hair. And it was long and, you know, not real good looking. And he would always take the hair that was left over on the comb, 
take it off and put it in a little ball and put it in his pocket. And he saved all that hair. They have a box of hair that was in the truck. Do you know why they he Did saves he the hair? Toe strap for the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I forget what they told me. Somebody told me why he said he did it, but I don't remember. That oh, anymore. I wish you knew the answer to that. Maybe it's in the documentary. <laughs> yeah, it, it be. might be. I yeah. don't know. But I just, very odd, but I thought it was quite interesting. I'm, I'm intrigued that. to see he the probably, box of hair for some reason. Yeah, I was excited when I saw it. He probably but, knew someday people would be sitting around talking about all his hair he collected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but at the Vehicle Museum, they have his old truck, which I think was in 1938 or 39. I know it was a Dodge. I don't remember the year. I don't remember it was a Dodge, but that's good. One of us does. Yeah. Uh, but it, they have, like, the paint has been redone and everything. They have the pictures that he always had. And what he would do was he would drive from New York where they lived, come down to Zern's every Friday and Saturday night. And that's where he would show all his stuff. He was like back at the side where the truck could be. Um, and he would show all his feats of strength and then he would sell his stuff from there. So, you know, just people seeing the truck again, those that had seen him over the years, it like takes them back to when they were sure, teenagers. Sure. It takes yeah. them back to when they were little kids. So it's really, really cool. And, I, and, and did he did he like nail hammers and I mean nail I mean hammer nails into the truck or something like that? Or? No, but he he had a board and he would do that. With oh, his okay. Hand. I was just yeah. Hand, and yeah. one time he had the nail the wrong way. They said so that kind of hurt. But after that, he was a little bit more careful. Yeah. But um, just talking when Jerry and his wife were down at the car museum looking at the truck, I kept thinking, I wish I could take pictures of what your mind is thinking just the memories it must be so cool to have those um and different stories jerry was telling us that like wasn't in any of the books i read or the newspapers or anything like that but one of the cutest stories well this was in the in the book but it didn't say which child um they were having a, a day at school and the teacher was saying oh what does your dad do for a living and you know the one of oh my dad's a doctor you know, my dad's a baker and his son, Jerry said, oh, my dad bites chains and, and, you know, <laughs> bends horseshoes and That's stuff. That's the coolest dad right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the teacher was like, oh, this kid is telling stories. So she wrote a note and he was supposed to take it home to his dad, which he did. And um, the mighty Adam was really mad because this teacher did not believe this kid. Right. So he took him to school the next day went into the teacher's desk and he said, I hear you think my son is telling stories. Well, he's not. And he reached in his pocket and he got a chain and he <laughs> bit a link off, set it on the desk. He reached in his pocket, got another nail, took care of it, set it on the desk. And he said, and my son does not tell stories. <laughs> but I, that was just, it was in the book and it didn't say which son it was when I read it. Yeah. So when Jerry told me, he said, oh, I have a story to tell you about when I was at school. And he told me that was him. I was just like, oh, oh that's you're really the one. Cool. That's yeah. really cool. So it's it's just amazing. You know, he was. Just, is Jerry still alive? Yes, okay. he is. Um, he's in his 90s. He's the only one that is still alive. Um, he was one of the younger ones. But um, a real sweetheart. And yeah. he looks like his dad years ago right you know if you compare them and they said um jerry's son the one that wrote this the documentary looks just like him too oh really so it's kind of cool He's yeah passing it down for the generations so um so yeah so he used to perform at zerns um, he used to perform at green dragon too okay green dragon all right um but he was also he was he was in uh ripley's believe it or not or or performed on Ripley? Not, not the no, show. No, the, there yeah. was a show wouldn't have been there. But no, I know he got in for some things. I don't remember what they are, but okay. I mean, and the Guinness Book World Records. I know he was in that, and, and I, I looked that up real quick. That 1976, yeah, or I, the strongest jaw, which that's why he was biting yeah, a chain. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and people thought, you know, oh, this isn't a normal chain or whatever, but it really was. Yeah, and I think in some years later. 
some people tried to trick him and they got some kind of chain that was coated with something and he actually broke teeth. And that oh, was got to the point where he's like, yeah. you know, no, I'm yeah. not doing this anymore. Yeah. Well, when we did meet Jerry, the one thing he said is he said, everybody thinks there's a trick to it. They think you're tricking them. And he said, it's not a trick. He said, it took me years to be able to bend like a, what five penny nail or that he one said one. you just keep working up to it he's like you just keep practicing and you get stronger and stronger and he said you know people will sit there and say ah i could do that or there's a trick but he said no he said it really takes a lot of work to be able to do these feats of strength yeah and so. you just have to fight through the pain that was the other thing yeah. he said just fight through the pain which and i don't think any of us really do that nowadays no it's like oh it hurts like, so i'm gonna stop. stop yeah, yeah. Ouch. Exactly. Yeah, it says here, I just looked them up, and I also posted this in the comments if people want to go back. I just posted a link to his wiki page. Uh, it said he was featured five times in Ripley's Believe It or Not and was a 1976 Guinness Book of World Record holder. Uh, he'd bending iron horseshoes by hand. We talk about that. Sold coconut oil soaps and healthy elixirs at fairs and farmers markets. That's probably what brought him to Zerns, right? right? And he had an old Model A truck with panels that opened up to show his extensive collection of news clippings and citations. And that's what and that's at the what museum. Yeah, see, yeah. At, the at the museum, right. Uh, mayor LaGuardia, who was one of the very famous mayors of New York City, uh, issued a proclamation thanking Greenstein for his showing his skills to the city's police department. Apparently, he was a jujitsu instructor for the uh, New, York Silly, New York City Auxiliary Police during world war ii so you know he's he's pretty you know locally and nationally famous person one of my favorite stories from the book that i read was um this was right before world war ii he was in new york city and he was jewish there was a sign up on the building that said no jews no dogs yeah this is a great story yeah, yeah. And he says to one of the shop owners what's this about and they're like there's nazis in there we're having a meeting so he grabs a ladder climbs up the ladder rips the sign down and they said it was like a cartoon like all these nazis come running out the building running out the door he like jumps off the ladder beats them all up yeah so he gets arrested <laughs> He's punching nazis dude yeah. exactly what a, nazis deserve oh yeah yeah, yeah. Punch in the jaw. Get, it even gets better <laughs> so he, they, he gets arrested so he goes in front of the judge and the judge looks at him and he looks at all of these nazis he says they're like broken arms black eyes and he goes this little guy did this to all of you because I'm letting him off and he got no charges. He got let go. So, I mean, so was, he was, he was small in stature. Like he, Oh I yeah. Think he was five foot four. Well, actually really? when he was born, I mean, everything about this guy's life is amazing. Yeah. yeah. He was a premature baby. And um, do you remember? He was like three and a half pounds. Um, he was only at six months. I mean, it was, his mother was six months pregnant. Do you remember what year him. he was born? Um, it was like the early 1900s. It was 1893. Oh, right. Yeah, so yeah. she actually had to feed him with an eyedropper. So he was always small. And how he got into this was when he was younger, he went and watched the circus. And he snuck in. And he watched the strong man perform. Well, the, I guess the other circus people found him and beat him up. Well, the strong man found him and he said... You're never going to get beat up again, and took him under his wing and taught him how to be uh, a strong man. So I think that's why that's just, pretty. That's a great story in itself, right yeah, there. It's really cool. The whole cool. book has like just amazing things, you know. Yeah, he was just an amazing person. He was, and the determination. That's that's the whole key to yeah. it. Yeah. You know, fight through the pain, fight through the pain. That's what you yeah. got to do. Well, yeah. When we talked to Jerry, he said, yeah, you know, we were talking about the story with the Nazis. And he said, that's how my dad always was. He always stood, we always stood up for the underdog, you know, or what was right. And he's like, that's just how, what he taught us. And that's what our family has always done. Yeah. So just think that was just really amazing. Yeah. He just was a neat person. Yeah. You know, so Absolutely. Do you want to talk about some of the other connections? We we talked about the the Irish anvil. Well, we didn't, but this is stuff that was bent by the Irish anvil, who learned it from Slim the Hammer Man, yeah, right? And Slim the Hammer Man learned it from the Mighty Adam. So let's go through that pro progression. We've talked about the Mighty Adam, right? So he's Mighty Adam's at Zerns, and then the Mighty Adam gets hooked up with Slim, Slim the, the Hammer, Hammer Man. Man was would go to Zerns every weekend. To see him, and at what what age? Did you um, I think he was in his teens because he wasn't married or anything yet. Okay. And um, the mighty Adam would always say, "Here, can anybody? 
can anybody bend this? And he's like, I can bend that old man. <laughs> and so he took it and he bent it. And um, like other people really couldn't do that. So later he talked to him and he said, like, you know, you need to pursue this. You've got it. You've got what There's you something need. right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Slim the Hammer Man used to work at a quarry and not like the ones nowadays where they have all the machinery. It was you went and you pounded and pounded rocks all day. So he was very strong. I think they owned the quarry. I don't know. Did he own the quarry? Yeah, her, her cousin okay. was married to his son. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, talk to you then. Yeah, oh. Slim Slim Farman. The family name is 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 Farman. Right. And Slim's a local guy, or was a local guy. He just died about maybe a year or so. He is twenty one. Yeah, and, he died in last October, November. Right. Yeah. It lived in the Pottstown area for mm -hmm. his entire life, was from the Pottstown area. So that's the connection here. That's the local connection is that Slim the Hammer Man becomes uh, the mighty Adams understudy. Right. Uh, through their connection at Zern. Yeah. <laughs> in in Gilbert's Zern is, is the connection right. capital of the world. And I remember <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, there used to be a nutrition and health food store on High Street in Pottstown, close to where Elastic Furniture is now. And I remember in the early to mid 80s going there to see different feats of strength that they would do. Um, you know, the idea was if you ate your health food and took your vitamins, you could be strong like right. these guys. And they'd have a guy karate chopping through blocks of ice. But it was there that I saw Slim the Hammer Man perform one of his hammer tricks. Okay. So I, I re and I, I'm friends with Josh Farman, who is Slim's grandson. So I, I remember uh, watching Slim perform and then later on in life slim had stopped performing but was a regular attendee at most of the things that went on downtown in Pottstown. the fourth of july the street you know the street fairs uh any kind of thing uh, he wasn't doing the hammer tricks anymore but you could certainly challenge him to a handshake conversation <laughs> and the Which guy would lose yeah i mean yeah. he he was he had a extremely strong grip you yeah. know just shaking his hand yeah Cool. I, I would think so. It's good but, insight yeah, he, there, Matt. And one thing that was different between um, the Mighty Adam and Slim the Hammer, the Mighty Adam, I believe, I could have this wrong. One of them bent this way, and the other one bent this way. Yeah, they um, might have had different a different yeah, technique. And I think it was because the Slim the Hammer man had such strong wrists. From he would take these huge hammers and be able to lift them up and hold them. Yeah, and touch him to his it, nose right and without it, it going smack smash. him in the face right. and i mean he had other people that would try to lift them and they couldn't even lift them to move them and he's holding two of them up like this yeah so yeah he was pretty amazing too and he then taught tom kelly um the irish um anvil anvil thank you um how to do the different things and he worked with him so he was you know nurtured from Slim the Hammer Man. So how, approximately how old is, is the Irish Anvil? Oh, he's probably in his early 40s, I would okay. think. Would you think? Yeah, between 40 and 50. All right. Good. And he's still young and still doing yeah. it. Like, oh, yeah. He's yeah these are actually from uh, some things he bent from Durier Day. So he performed there for the car museum. But here's a horseshoe, but you can see it's twisted around. And this is... It's just like a steel bar. Yeah. This is what we were trying to bend earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and he will be at, um, he's coming to the documentary and then he's going to come to the vehicle museum so that he can chit chat with people. So it will stuff. be like a meet and greet too on, yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. And a private reception at the auto museum. Right. You have and to you have get your to see the movie. To get in. And you get a, and you get a little booklet or something you get a too. A little booklet that we put together with, with just, um, really a small tidbits of information about his life because there's so much you got to get yeah. the book and yeah. read the book it's just i'm assuming will the book be for sale or available uh, there? no you're probably gonna have to buy it on ebay or something or can you come here to the to the um historical society to, to, no, to read it no this is my personal copy uh, okay. sorry yeah, i don't think <laughs> you have a copy i was no, trying I, I was trying to... i know yeah um but i yeah i 
don't know that you can find them in old books store yeah, maybe and or... if you do find one for a good price get it because they're selling for a hundred dollars online oh really yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they need Land to republish hunted. that i think yeah we had hunted for a long time to find it i did and it's like i'm not letting it yeah. to anyone sorry nope. I, I don't want to lose it not when it's but worth it was 100 just bucks. like just totally amazing just all the stories about him and and one of the things, another thing that Jerry told us, these are things that aren't in the book. Um, Jerry told us that when he was in Texas, he had a garage in Texas where he fixed cars and stuff. And actually Harry Houdini was coming through. He was doing a tour somewhere and he had a flat tire and he ended up changing the tire for Harry Houdini. And he just lifted up the, he didn't use a, a yeah, jack, jack, he just right. lifted it up. Um, <laughs> but I, I thought that was really cool. It's like two famous people yeah, yeah. intermixing. Absolutely. But that was neat. So I want to take a couple of seconds to let people know that they can find the uh, ticket sales on the Boyertown Historical Society's webpage. I have that up on the screen. It's really easy to find. Boyertownhistory.org. If you head over to there and then go to the events section of the page, that's going to take you to the event. It's also going to take you to a link where you can order your ticket and get your ticket for the show. $25 for an entire evening of entertainment, which includes some um, food and refreshments so 25 bucks is not bad because you're seeing a movie you're going to the museum you're getting a reception you're getting the meet and greet um so this is an entire book. yeah and, and and the booklet so this is an entire evening of uh entertainment uh about the things that are going on here in boyertown and uh more boyertown history so it supports what we have uh, three different nonprofit organizations yeah. that have teamed up for this. Yeah, yeah, the Boyertown Historical Society, the State Movie Theater, and the um, historic Boyertown Historical Vehicle yeah. Museum. I always, <laughs> yeah. I always get Boyertown them Museum historical, historical vehicles. vehicles. Yeah. Here's another thing that I did just so people know. I put Facebook links and web page links to these different folks and to these different organizations in the chat so after the show you can go back into the chat and click on any one of these organizations that we talked about and learn more information about what's going on and again you can get your tickets at boyertownhistory.org go to the event section and it pops right up i spent a little bit of time this afternoon researching for that and i was literally able to find a link for the tickets in less than 30 seconds awesome yeah and you will not physically get the ticket in the mail. It'll be like a call at the call window. You'll just give your name and we'll check it off. Give you the physical ticket, which is your souvenir ticket too, because it has a picture on. Awesome. And then you just show it to them at the vehicle museum and they'll let you in for the reception. So people watching, you definitely want to be on that list. Um, you know, it sounds, I mean, if, if you're not intrigued from just these little tidbits of story about this guy, I mean, I am. Yeah. I don't know how anybody else couldn't be. We're excited I about like it. it. It's yes. just like like um, Rachel said, we passed around a book and each of us was like, this is really amazing. This guy is yeah. totally amazing. Amazing. That's a perfect he, word for him. Yeah. No one will fill his shoes. Right. So let's change gears here a little bit. We are here at the Boyertown Historical Society and, um, and there's something new going on right yeah. here that yeah. you're here to tell us about yeah so um we're really excited um the historical society is actually under contract to purchase the um historic bears mill located at sawmill and ironstone drive correct dad mm -hmm. um but it's a privately owned museum it's almost completely intact um ed knows the most about it he's our ex mill expert, expert. Yes. yeah so uh, um like you said we're very excited um we're going to be doing some fundraising you know just to make sure we you know can move forward on the project and we're just really excited to keep this a museum that was our big thing we want to make sure it's such a beautiful mill all the equipment's intact uh, we want to make sure it stays that way so, so this is a historic mill it's yes. on, the, on the national register as a historic mill and what year what year is this mill it, it was it built in the form that you see it now, it was 1897. Okay. That's a long time ago. Yes. It, yeah. it had been a um, linseed oil mill before that. But, of course, you just don't have that many facts of it then. You know? Okay. So what? Did, so then in, um, what was it, 1897, did you say? Yes. 
what did it become at that point? What kind it of mill? It became a um, wooden spoke and handle factory. Okay. Made all kind of, you know, hammer handles, rake shovels, anything that needed spun on a lathe. And wooden spokes for tractors and then Cars, wagons. Wagons, and, yeah. yes. I think the neat, one of the neat things they made too was baseball bats. Cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's really an interesting. Yeah. Fact. Can every, you still make a baseball bat there? Absolutely. Yeah. And every small town had a baseball team. Mm -hmm. You know, Gablesville were the Gablesville Owls. Okay. Um, Beckelsville, I think it was the Athletics. But you know, that was the big thing back then. Yeah. Every every little town had their team. You didn't go to Dorney Park. You went to Bethelsville <laughs> and watched the baseball. Yeah, game. sure, sure. You know, but I think the important thing too is this mill has a connection with so many other businesses. Like, um, there was a sawmill next door as well, and um, they would make wood for the casket company. They also made wagon spokes for the um carriage factory. Yeah, I all, mean, they're... all the local carriage factories got their spokes from Baird's Mill, which the carriage factory is where the Boyertown. Museum yep. of Historic Vehicles is right now. Yes, they, they started as a carriage factory. Yeah. Urban Henry was also a carriage. They were into carriage sales. They didn't, they assembled, they didn't make much there. Oh, okay. Cool. So, Ed, since the place is like very, it's um, intact, right? Like, what yes. percentage of intact are we talking about, would you say, in your professional opinion? 90 percent yes and i heard before the show that you can actually hook up some uh motors and engines and get some of the mill running right absolutely how often have you done that uh i did that this afternoon this afternoon yeah and um so you could still are you are you planning on doing milling demonstrations since the mill can operate um, myself yeah is I, that something that is that something that's in the work so to speak and right now we're just trying to get through this purchasing process yeah yep. I, I mean future down the road probably it's a possibility yeah yeah did, did you prior to this did... uh i've i've never made anything okay. i have run all the equipment still operates I have, you know, you got to play with things. Right. <laughs> sure. But, but I, it never... is like a man's paradise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a woodworking factory. And, you know, I've spun the machinery, but no, I've never flung sawdust anywhere. Okay. Now, how did you figure out how to do all this stuff? Do you have a, a, a background in machinery or is this something you just figured out? hundred stuff. Right, it right. It doesn't have computer chips. Right, it's right. All physical parts right you know you look at it and if you turn this this turn right you can figure out the link and what you need to do to adjust it, mm -hmm. it it's all basically simple machinery gotcha do you have a background though in in this stuff like mechanical this kind stuff of, yeah sure. okay i mean that's what i've done my whole life there you go all right but it, it's it's quite basic right yeah, I mean, like your cell phone. I look at that. I can do nothing with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, that right. Machinery. I yeah, you can figure it, it out. Restore a mill, though. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's getting to be a lost art, right? So, really, there's a certain amount of of uh, human preservation going into this, yeah, right? Like I the mean, not human knowledge. It's like anything else. It's very hard to get young people mm -hmm. interested in. It. Right. You know, it, it's just it's an obsolete business sure um, but i guess where i'm going with this is without the, the effort and the time that you're putting into it this could become lost knowledge it, right it, yeah it would be a candy shop right yeah. right it, it's <laughs> that's the reason that we're into this mm -hmm. is the to preserve me has gotten so bad that it's got to be taken over by an organization okay because the government will help private individuals not at all Gotcha. So you're hoping that by taking it over as a nonprofit, there's going to be some what grant money and stuff available yeah, yeah, for we'll this? Yeah, we'll be able to apply for grants. Also, fundraising. You know, Matt, like if you wanted to make a big donation to us, it'd sure, be a tax write off mm -hmm. for you. I think that's where Matt was going. With yeah, it, right. Mm -hmm. to give a big donation. Yeah. yeah. Well, I heard sure. like a ten thousand dollar. Holy smokes! <laughs> I said big, Matt. Yeah, big, <laughs> big, big. All right. The historical Society also has a following. Mm -hmm. You know, a private individual doesn't have a following. 
Right, right. You pick up events, you pick up visitors, and you know they help defray some of the costs. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the the it had been it's it's a it has been a museum that's been open from time to time yes. for demonstrations or yes. Yes. viewing and everything. And now, were you involved weekend. with you were involved with it then? I'm, or, I've been involved for the last six years for the new owner. Okay, how, how did that come about? Right place, right time. I had been there um, when the prior owner had it. Mm -hmm. She used to work at the Boyertown Museum. Okay. So, you know, I got to know her there mm -hmm. through that. And I had visited the mill for one of her events. Okay. And, you know, just seen things operating. Right. And, Expressed an interest and yeah. had the right conversation at the right time. Yeah, I, I knew the, the current owner. And I just kind of fell into it, and I had the time and the interest to get involved. Okay. And so now, now that it's going to switch over to the uh, to the historical society, you've kind of taken the lead in in this effort, at least boots on the ground, day to day operations yes. of the mill. Yes, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. Until they tell me not to. Okay. <laughs> well, we talked with the current owner and we said Ed is coming along with the sale. Okay. So. You can write him into the sales yes, agreement. Yes, that's included. But, you know, I, I think where I'm going is, is this, this is important work, right? Because yes. if, if there's not people like Ed in the world, then right. this becomes lost. This yep. becomes lost knowledge. Society. Right. right. Sure. And people to do the funding and right. take an interest in it to see that it lives. And I think the important thing is, is that there's so many people that have a connection with this mill because it operated until like the 50s. Is that correct, Ed? Correct. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that are still alive that remember this mill in operation or went and got their groceries here. Or, you know, What was the mill doing in the 1950s? Because I'm sure they weren't doing spokes anymore. Um, he, Like I said, they did all kinds of handles. You okay. know, hammer handles. So whatever kind of but, whatever you needed. Yeah, they, they supplied a lot of the local hardware stores. Okay. You know, you, you didn't go buy your Chinese hammer handle. You bought one made a mile and a half down the road. Right. Yeah. But I think the important thing is this really, this mill, I think, really belongs to the community. I mean, we're lucky that it is, like Ed said, 90% intact. I mean, how many mills, like, if you go into a historic building like that, how often is yeah, all stripped. the equipment yeah. still intact in that building? Like, I really haven't seen that in since I've been around. Yeah, the, only, so. the only other one that comes to my mind in this area is Sunrise Mill, which is over on Knifer Road, which yeah, is, is owned by Montgomery so? County. Yeah, it's very intact, but it's not open to the public. Yeah, it actually, hasn't been for a long, long time. Yeah. Gene actually looked at that mill. I mean, mm -hmm. you guys interviewed him before for restoration. Yeah. So, the, but and I didn't the, realize all the equipment's still intact. Yeah, a lot of the equipment yeah. is still intact. Even a lot of the wiring is still intact over there at Sunrise. Yeah. But the problem is it's it, it has not been open to the public yeah. ever, I don't well, think. We were just talking about the equipment that's in the mill today. And Ed told us there's actually a piece of equipment in there that there's only three left in the entire world. Wow. Okay. So and what what that what describe it's, that it's uh, made by the john gleason company out of philadelphia it's a duplicating lathe. okay you take your pattern of a baseball right. bat mm -hmm. throw it in there and it'll spit out 500 baseball bats right 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 but, I, it kind of has right. like like a almost like a feeler arm on it that goes yes. along and then yes. sends it, that dimension got, to the lathe. a grip that actually follows whatever shape you put in right and if you put in like um an axe handle is kind of flat mm -hmm. well you put that in man this machine's flapping back and forth and chunks flying it's really a lot of fun to watch <laughs> right <laughs> you know? now what's the production rate on something like that like how many axe handles According could that thing to their catalog you could do 1100 handles a day okay okay Wow. So 1,100 times a day, some guy sticking his arm in a <laughs> Right, right, right. So putting I, a new chunk of wood in. Yeah. Taking one out, putting one in. I would imagine that the turnover was pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> so it was probably more limited by the human uh, factor than by the machine's yeah. capability. Once you ran out of fingers. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> I, <handled out> <laughs> I do have to say, if you go in, because, you know,
know, Ed doesn't always run the belts because it is uh, very dangerous. But if you go in, it's it's very intimidating when he turns all those belts on because you got belts up here and there's belts over here and behind you. And it's like if I move wrong, like I might lose a finger. It's like a, it's like a web you're in, huh? Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, but it's... it definitely um, gives you a perspective of what people were living with back then. Yeah, I have, it shows I you had... why OSHA was in vain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a chance to to see the inside of the mill yet. Yeah, I, I can't wait though. Yeah, it's it's very neat. And the, it sounds really. The other thing that I really love about the mill is the original water wheel is still intact. That's really cool. Yeah. So. Now, what kind of schedule is the mill currently open on? If people are interested in trying to stop by and check it out, um, do you know the schedule, or is there some place where people can go to find the schedule of the I, mill? Uh, the schedule is going to be all new with the historical society. I try to be there on the weekends as long as I can, you know, weather permitting because there's no heat in the building. Never has been. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there ever will be. Right. Because it's a big barn. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, big drafty barn. Yeah. So for yeah. anybody that's curious, the mill is located at 337 south ironstone drive in boyertown pennsylvania it's like on that's that y correct yeah it's on, it's actually on sawmill road which is it's at the intersection of sawmill road and uh ironstone, ironstone drive uh, i'm sure if you lived in this area and driven out that way you would immediately recognize it um i've probably in my life driven by, past it a thousand times never stopped in to see it but uh, i'm going to change that soon i did put a link up to their facebook page in the chat so again after the show or for people who are uh, tech savvy um during the show you can click over and take a look at their facebook page and learn more about what's going on at the bear mill i do i do have a quick question the, um so the, the owners that own it right now prior to the historical society um how did they how they come to own it i mean it was just part of a proper larger property or the uh gentleman that bought it drove by there every day to go to his business okay and there used to be a sawmill right across the road well when the casket factory shut down they were pretty much shut down okay and that building deteriorated to a point where it just fell down and this building was sitting vacant and he said that one fell down this one he, he's concerned he was concerned he was that concerned that was enough to buy the property and, and he's up kept it ever since yeah we we kind of brought it back wow awesome yeah that's great love keeping old history alive yes yep. yeah. we all do yeah <laughs> that's why we're here um matt I Jeff, we're getting close. We're yeah, yeah we're, we're at six forty-five, so we're at quarter of seven. If you want to start getting into what's going down in Boyertown, that's good. I mean, we've been talking about it so far. We've been talking right. about what's going down, but and I was just gonna say, I'm just gonna remind people that uh, the Mighty Adam fundraiser is going on this weekend on November thirteenth. You can get your tickets at boyertown historical society's webpage. i'm going to put links to that into the chat i'm also going to put their website back up on the screen remember folks 25 dollars gets you an entire evening of entertainment it gets you the movie it gets you a booklet it gets you a meet and greet it gets you into the historical society the museum the vehicle museum um, it gets you refreshments so in this day and age with inflation and everything else, I went out to lunch today and got an appetizer and an entree for lunch, 30 bucks. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. So for $25, you're getting an entire evening of entertainment, including some refreshments. Yeah. That's a deal. I it's think it's nice. a super deal. That's a, yeah. And you're helping out three different nonprofit yeah. organizations that are preserving the history of Boyertown. And I would come be, on. I would be really surprised. <laughs> I would be really surprised if anyone did this and, and came out of it saying uh, I didn't get my money. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure everyone will have a great time. So make sure to put that on your list of things to do this weekend. Um, speaking of this weekend, uh, I have a blog that I put out each week. It's called What's Going Down in Boyertown. You can find it at jeffknowsboyertown.com. Uh, it's an event blog. So it tells you what's what's happening in and around Boyertown. Um, this 
Thursday, tomorrow, tomorrow we're talking. Um, the Boyer Town Post Prom. There's a po- there's a Boyer Town Post Prom. Spit it out, yeah. I know Spit it's it a, it's a, I think it's a tongue twister. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Boy, there's a Boyer Town Post Prom fundraiser at Soul Joe's Comedy Club in the Sunnybrook Ballroom. Um, they, if if we if it have entered. So we have interviewed Soul Joel's before. I'm having You're trouble struggling. Talking. I am struggling. <laughs> um, and they were, they used to be out in Royersford and then they moved here to Pottstown. That's right. Yeah. Um, and they got an outside building or the outside. Uh, yeah, it's the dome. same setup. It's that. But they temp- also, they're inside. It's not They are doing zone. stuff inside as well. So yeah. I believe this event is actually inside. I okay. think they have two th- in the ballroom. Yep, I think I think so. They have two events going on Thursday night, and um, this one I believe is inside. But you can it it fun. It's a fundraiser for the Boyertown Post Prom fu- uh, Committee, which what they want to do is they want to take the kids at the end of prom and give them something to do after prom. Something and safe. Something to safe. Do. Yeah, safe is the key word. Um, so I think it's a it's a great fundraiser, and uh, and. It's live comedy, so it'll be fun. I'm um, gonna get some links to um, Soul Joe's at Sunnybrook, and I'm, I'll see if I can find anything about the uh, post prom. Okay, cool. Uh, Friday, we got um, it's Veterans Day, um, so thank your veteran. Uh, if you uh, you know a family member or just someone you know, maybe a neighbor or something, be sure to thank them. Um, you're so. We're going to go back to the um, historical side. You, you've been doing this patriotic warrior town here, yes. right? Um, and this is, and Veterans Day is the last day for that, correct? Yes. Okay, so tell us a little bit about that real quick. Um, so we just wanted to honor the different organizations in Boyer Town, you know, that have, you know, are patriotic. So we have an exhibit on the Boy Scouts. We have, it's a uh, Troop 3 was the original Boyer Town troop. And we have some Girl Scouts. We have um, some items out on display that are new items from the civil war do we have any revolutionary war i um, don't think okay. so no, and then also we received a large donation from the patriotic order sons of america which was a group in boyer town to spread patriotism you know like learn about the american flag that sort of stuff but they're disbanding the boyer town chapter so they donated all their like they have an altar, flags, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so okay. Cool. They donated it, everything to us. So we have that. It was very right similar now. to the. Um, it would be similar to like the Masons yes. or yep. uh, the Elks or one of these other fraternal organizations. Yep. There was one in Pottstown. Okay. And um, there's a, still a chapter up in Leesport, right off of 61, is where their uh, offices are. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, are they, are you doing anything stuff? special for since it's Veterans Day? We're not. We actually were trying to. Um, if, so if anyone has a in for this, but I did find a group that will come out and they'll record. They record veterans' experiences. And um, back, I don't know how many years ago, but the Historical Society actually did a project where they recorded World War II veterans' experiences, and we have that all on tape. Um, so I was looking to see if we could partner up with this other group to do the same thing for you know veterans from the Korean War, Vietnam War. Yeah, you know, Korean War vets are getting to be few and farther between. Exactly, and that's yeah. why I thought that it would be a great project, but we just weren't able to pull that together for this year. So I'm hoping maybe next year we might be able to to get that together. Okay, so. I want to throw a couple of things out yeah. here related to Veterans Day. One is remember that Veterans Day re- re- uh, commemorates all veterans, right? Um, Memorial Day is the, is the day that where we remember those that fell in the line of duty. There's a big distinction there. Yes. So Veterans Day is for anyone who served. Memorial Day is for those that died in the in the in the line of duty. That's the first thing because mm-hmm. there's a really big difference, and we should be uh, cognizant of that. Mm-hmm. Um, number two, I'm kind of working on a little bit of a research project. It's it it is does more center down in Pottstown, but I'll take whatever stories I can get. I'm trying to collect stories specifically of black or African American veterans from Pottstown and we surrounding area. Yeah. yeah. So if, if anybody up in the Boyertown area knows a vet of any war, any conflict, I'm looking specifically for stories of African American vets from Pottstown, Boyertown, and the surrounding okay. areas. All right, we'll definitely keep our ears open for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many have you interviewed so far? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Unfortunately, it it's hard. I mean, yeah. I've, I have some I have some connections and there's some people that have given me some ideas. There's one gentleman that I just have his, him and my schedule have not yeah. connected. Um, but it's 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 hard. And I think we struggle with the lingering effects of racism. And, mm -hmm. and that's the old, that's the nicest way I can say it. Um, it's it's hard to reach out to that 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 specific community from time to what time. What about if you talk to the VFW? Uh, yeah, I have some connections, and I've talked to some of those folks. I'm also working. Uh, this is in combination with a bigger project that I'm working on with Mike Murphy from Veterans Island Project, mm -hmm. which uh, is an organization which is re restoring the island at Memorial Park in Pottstown. Okay. And uh, we're trying to collect these stories in combination with the work that's going on there. And also I'm involved at Edgewood Cemetery, which is an abandoned cemetery in Pottstown. Um and there, we know that there's an African American section of that cemetery. Okay. So this is kind of a, it's a combination of things that I'm yeah. working on, but yeah. Is, we all are. That cemetery <laughs> is are, are the graves marked still? Edgew Edgewood. Yeah. 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 Edgewood okay. Cemetery is a cemetery at the corner of Kime and High Street. Most people would know it's the cemetery across the street from the restaurant Jack Cassidy's. Okay. Um, and also I just want to point out that um. If you um, want to, I guess, help out a veteran on on Veterans Day, um, the Carl Spatz Museum is veteran run. So, I mean, you go there and you pay a small admission and you see a wonderful museum. That would be a good thing to do, I think. I'm going to put a link up to their Facebook page as well. We had a show there. We did. Uh, we interviewed them what they're doing over there is unbelievable Great. i literally yeah. got goosebumps talking to them about everything that was they were doing and the program if you go and take that tour and do the full program they're actually taking you through a recreation of a world war ii bombing mission right yeah. yes you yeah. get it from the inside scoop what an airman would have experienced preparing to go on a bombing mission during and i know they just put up a couple of uh new exhibits as well yeah yeah so um also on friday night um or also on friday uh they're doing a build night at boyer town brickworks which is the lego place that we interviewed as well <laughs> <laughs> these actually these all connect to where okay. we've interviewed all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah they're doing a build night where it's just free you can come in you know adults children doesn't matter go in and you can just build you you can you don't have to buy anything you just build with legos and you can buy afterwards if you want to but you don't have to Maybe we should so, have to. yeah it'd like be fun, fun. right <laughs> absolutely um you know it would be a good thing like i'm just thinking like if you had some kids or a family or like if there's adults that are into legos but there's tons of adults here's what i would do yeah, I would go and build some Legos, right? It's free. Mm -hmm. Go spend some time, maybe make a purchase and support their business. You're right downtown then. So you park once, you go there, then you walk right around the corner, go to Durango's or go to the other farm or maybe go to the state and check out a movie. You, There's so much. You, yeah, park, so you come much to different. Boyertown, you park once and you can keep walk, yourself entertained yeah. for the rest of the evening. Well, yeah. My family and I did that like uh, a few weeks ago. Okay. We did a whole evening in Boyertown, which was just pure fun. Right. Yeah, it was a great night. Kids totally walkable. Yeah. So you're cutting down on your gas bill, right? Everybody's cognizant of that. And like I say every week, you always have a whole bunch of stuff on your list of things to do that are free. Yeah. And See, if you live in town, you have no excuse. No excuse. You don't even have <laughs> to drive. Stuff you don't even on. have to start your car if you live yeah, in town. Never. Just walk over to the Brickworks and hang out for a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. And then when you get thirsty, go to Durango's. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> um, so at the State Theater, which is hosting the uh, Mighty Adam uh, on Sunday, but on Friday night, they have opening night for Black Panther's um, what, Wakanda Forever. Yeah, I'm going to see that. Yeah, Dude, good. the Black Panther movie. The first was one was really good. It was awesome. Yeah. I watched it yeah. like three times. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so that would be exciting. That's the opening night for it. Um, if you can't catch it Friday, catch it Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, on I, Saturday, 
Go ahead. No, I put a link up to the state movie theater earlier in the chat. So there's links to that. Um, so on Saturday, you already mentioned the Bears Den Fitness. Um, they have a free workout dedicated to the veterans. Free. Free. Right. I think it's the Murph. Or, or no, that's they do the Murph on the Memorial Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is this is um, a workout that was designed by uh, a former me- member of the Steel S- Seal Team. Oh, so Six. it is. It is the Murph then. Is it? So yeah, it's, it's, it's the same it's, thing. It's hard. Yeah, is it yeah, hard? yeah. The name of the every well, a lot of the, a lot of but, the, so the CrossFit that took his own life. Hmm. Yeah. So that might be that might be Job Price. Okay. Job was from Pottstown. Oh, I think I have the name. It's Chad Wilkinson. Okay, so this is a different one. Then. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it might have been the Murph, but it's not. But yeah. the Murph is tough too. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sh- it's 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 Seal it's, Team it's, Six. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be tough, right? It's be tough. But I'm sure it's fun. You know, they're not gonna they're not gonna make you do crazy stuff. They're well, gonna, remember they're gonna do what what you you can do. Yeah, we learned from Jeff that it's self-paced yeah so you do as much of that as you can if you need to modify something to get through it then that that's what you do right exactly um the uh boyertown community library uh they have their story walk around boyertown which is like it's for your kids to go and you start at the um at the library and you go from business to business throughout boyertown and you you're reading a, a book along the way like each stop has part of the book um, which is a lot of fun. They do it in the park in the summertime, but this month they're doing it out in town. The last one was cute. It was a turkey. It was like a book about a turkey. This is this is this is uh maybe the same one. Run turkey run. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That they're doing it all month. Okay. So yeah. Did you do it? Oh, we're running the stops. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. So I got a couple of the pages. I was okay. very tempted to run around and read the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. You should. I know. Yeah. I gotta get out of the candy store though. That, yeah. <laughs> um yeah, Pepper Mystic Candy Store. Rachel is the owner, and uh, she loves to give your children sweets. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> sugar them up and then let them walk all around town and burn it off. Right. There you go. Uh, also on Saturday, um, the Cellar House Gift Shop, which we interviewed, um, they're doing uh, tea leaf and tarot readings. You do have to book an appointment for that. I think they're doing, I don't know if it's 15-minute appointments. I'm not sure. But uh, you can you can see that on my um, blog. Uh, also, and I don't know anything about this, Matt. I don't think you do either. But poke on uh, Saturday night, deal me in games in Boyertown, across from Durango's. Uh, Poke, they're doing a Pokemon Saturday pack tournament, which I have no idea what that means. My kid, my my son does Pokemon t- Pokemon stuff, but. Um, I don't, I don't understand it. So. Well, he'll teach you if you but want to learn. But if there's kids or some parents watching, they might know what I'm talking about. Because yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, I know Jason will teach you any game. So. Oh, yeah? So, so he knows. Yeah, he All knows. Right. All right. Uh, also, Saturday night, there's a new Yingling Beer Garden um, and Cafe at the Boyertown Train Yard, which we were talking about, I think, at, at, on another episode. Yeah, we were trying to figure out exactly. So it is in the – it isn't in the – the train yard okay and uh it's weekends it's not every day though like this weekend it's just saturday so you have to keep your eye on that but i saw a picture of it i haven't been there yet i saw a picture of it, it looked beautiful i mean yeah they have like a little gazebo there kind of in the walkway nice. yeah in the walkway between uh where Durango's is and the and then the pizza shop mm-hmm. there's like a gazebo back in there and that's where they're doing it okay i drove by there with uh gypsy chris and we looked in but and they have a bunch of tables set yeah, up and everything. yeah 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 we tried to go but we couldn't fit it into our schedule because we were too busy doing all the stuff that there is to do around right there. right but yeah check that out it looks it looks beautiful and um last weekend was perfect um with the weather this weekend might be a little colder but still nice i put a link i put links up to all of these places in the chat so if you would like to learn more about one of these places that just talking about just go back into the chat after the show and you'll be able to click on the links to these different organizations and businesses facebook page i also want to remind people that if you would like to watch a past episode of the cast at glocker that is much better done on youtube at Glocker 
Realty, and Insurance. All the past episodes are up there at Glocker Realty Insurance. It's just an easier platform to navigate to watch the past episodes. Yeah, they're all in one spot. They're all in one spot. Yeah. Uh, so go over there if you would like to see how we have tried to support local businesses and organizations. Don't forget, folks, that every dollar that you spend in local businesses, 80% of those dollars stay local. If you go to the big box store, only 40% of your dollars stay yeah. local. So whenever you can, as often as you can, Shop support local. local businesses. The money stays in the community. Yep. And why wouldn't you want it to do that, right? Exactly. Uh, Sunday, we have uh, Barn Fresh Vintage Market. Um, they are doing a Chalk Painting 101 Arts and Crafts. And then also on Sunday... Last but not least, we are doing, or not we, they are doing a screening of The Mighty Adam at the State Theater at 4 o'clock. So make sure you get your tickets for that in advance in case they sell out. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to put that graphic up over the screen one more time so people can see it. Once you get to the Boyertown uh, Historical Society webpage, just go to events and look for the picture of Mighty Adam. Click on that link, and that's going to give you more information about the event and a link to purchase the tickets. Remember, it's 25 bucks for an entire evening of entertainment. That's going to support local nonprofits, which is going to support preserving Boyertown history. So the um, Boyertown Historical Society, do you have anything else that you wanted to, any events coming up oh, that you wanted to mention? We have a whole mention? list. Oh, always have it. Well, we have our Belschnickel coming up. Okay. That is always Thanksgiving weekend. Is there a Belschnickel there? Um, you never know. Oh. <laughs> we have um, our holiday tour coming up, and that is the first Friday night in December. Okay. And for, for the first Friday? event is well, that the uh, same no, thing or is that different no it's it always the been the step. first friday okay. it's, yeah yeah it's not related to that okay and there probably is going to be a belschnickel at that thing okay okay Those so we also today. have um on november 30th we have a really exciting program coming up garrett stauffer his family was one of the i guess founders or owned i think pen line which was um, a model railroad company they used to make ho scale trains um, but he re recently wrote a book about his, the business and um, he's going to be coming and doing a program about Penline and we'll have the books there for sale, of course. So, you know, a lot of people are into model trains and this is a business that made them right here in Boyertown. And, and when is that? Um, November 30th. It's um, a Wednesday, the last Wednesday in November. It'll be at seven o'clock right here at the Society. If you're a member, which we highly suggest you do, it's free. If not, it's five dollars to come and watch. Okay. So, How much does it cool. cost to become a member of the Boyertown Historical Society? For an individual, it's twenty five dollars. For a family, forty five. Twenty five bucks. Yeah. For the year. year. Yeah. Are you gonna for a whole year. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna join. Yeah. I'm gonna awesome. give you my money as soon as this you is over. You get a Perfect. newsletter twice every yeah. other month that tells you what's coming on mm -hmm. up. We have a program every month. Uh huh. So you can come to the programs for free. You get a list of all the events so that right. you can't forget them and miss them. You know, we also and do, then I'll have access to come in and do my historical yes, research. Yeah, yeah. Sure. For, yeah. yeah. And we go. also do members only tours sometimes too. Mm. So you have to be a member to go Ooh. on the tours. So, I'm intrigued. Yes. You'll get my membership uh right after the show. Perfect. Copy papers to fill out. Awesome. We also um have the bear drop at the end of December. We do, that, and that the kids love that. And actually it's really cool because they drop a bear at six o'clock, which would be 12 o'clock German, German time, time. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, our German yeah. history. They do it from the fire truck. And then we can all go home and go to bed and don't have to wait till the ball gets dropped in New York. Uh, <laughs> so we find. Uh, we yeah, at midnight. Six o'clock sounds kids. way more reasonable. We have the younger the kids and they love it. The other thing is last year we started, um, we had the kids put together gift bags for the seniors over at Chestnut Knoll. Um, this year we're actually going to have people do cards and little gift packs for our first responders. Oh, very so, good. So yeah, that'll be like the activity before the bear drops. Yes. So oh, that's great. That's a great. Yeah. That's a great thing. And that's a whole free nice. thing. You don't have to be a member. 
We just drop it in the back alley here. All right. Very good. <laughs> back alley Thanks, drops. Boy. I love it. <laughs> All right. And, and, and your website? Yep. It, it'll be on the web, our website. No, I mean, what is your website? Boyertownhistory.org. Okay. Sorry. Very easy. That's okay. <laughs> It's super easy. I, I I just Googled Boyertown Historical Society and it just came right up with a whole bunch of, bunch of other information. And again, I put the links to it in the chat multiple times. And the link, the website address has been displayed prominently on the page for the majority of the show. Very good. Thank you. And no problem. Is there anything you'd like to promote or say? To your the, fan base out there, because <laughs> everybody knows Ed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just very glad that the historical society is acquiring the mill. Yes, because it needs to be saved. Absolutely, that's one man's opinion. We need to save history. I yes. agree with that 100. Yes, yeah. you can't have a future without history. That's We're, right. Exactly. We're that's glad right. to do that, so Ed stays out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt. Uh, tomorrow night at uh, 6 o'clock on Porchcast Pottstown on YouTube or Matt Green at Glocker Real Estate on Facebook. I'm going to be hosting more history stuff. We're All talking right. what to is it? Todd Bainbridge okay. from Pottstown Area History Collective. That is a Facebook page that belongs to Todd where he is conducting kind of an online Facebook history research project about the borough of Pottstown. Um, oftentimes he does find articles and tidbits of information that link Pottstown and Boyertown together. Right. If you like want I mean, throughout history, it's been, been, been linked a, together totally. from all, the beginning, from the very beginning of yep. both cities and both areas. Yes. Lots of links between Boyertown and Pottstown. Pottstown area history collective is a Facebook page run by Todd Bainbridge, who is a historian on matters of Pottstown history. And he's coming on Porchcast Pottstown tomorrow at 6 to bring us up to speed about what he's doing with his research project on Facebook. Very good. And 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 where can people find you, Matt? Uh, people can find me just by Googling Matt Green at Glocker or Matt Green at Glocker Real Estate. You can also find me by typing in the words Porchcast Pottstown. Awesome. And you'll find me, Matt Green. That's super simple. <laughs> super simple. Um. I just wanted to put out there. Um, I just, uh, I'm a real estate agent. If somehow, <laughs> somehow. <don't> know. <laughs> don't you have some new listing? I do, right here? right here in the heart of Boyertown. Yeah, that, tell us about that, it. That, that's interesting. Um, for investors out there, the old library. So not the not the new library. I don't want that to get confused. The old library. I I listed that building for sale. It's two. It consists of two buildings, 29 and 31 East Philadelphia Avenue. Don't worry about the businesses inside. They are staying. Mm -hmm. They have leases. The leases goes with the sale. So you don't worry. Not, not, I'm going to use some lingo. The, Go ahead. The building is currently cash flowing for it, you investors out it there. It is. It is. It's fully leased building. So it's immediately uh, going to give you some pa positive cash flow. Plus, it's right across the street from the candy store. So Which I mean, is very that's, important. That's a selling point. Yes. <laughs> that you're probably added at least $100,000 <laughs> to the list price. I agree. At I least. So if you're interested in that, you can find me at Jeff at Glocker. That's, you just Google Jeff at Glocker and you will find all my connections. It's that easy. Right. Yeah. I've uh, had six settlements in two weeks. Can you imagine that? that? That's good. Yeah, dude. That's I'm good. a little busy. All right. Real estate Busy's is good. booming. It is still booming. Um, you know, things are changing in real estate a little bit, but it's it's still booming. It's still a good time and to absolutely, sell. Absolutely good time to sell. If you have something in the Boyertown area, hit Jeff up. Yeah. If you have something in the Pottstown area, hit Matt up. Very We're your good. Boyertown and Pottstown experts. That's right. Would you say? I would say. There you go. Yes. Jeff knows Boyertown. Matt knows Pottstown. And as for our show, the Cassock Locker, we are taking a short hiatus and we'll be back oh. on December 7th. Why are we taking a hiatus? <laughs> no, you should you should say so that you can get some moral support. Oh, you, you think there's some You might need it. I am getting a little surgery, but it's it's fine. Nothing that will it will pass over quickly. Hopefully, it'll speed you up rather <laughs> yes. than slow you down. I'm an old man getting a, a new hip. Is what <laughs> it is. Uh, it was a it was a, a injury that I had as a as a child, and uh, and it's done its toll on my hip. So. 
little little hip replacement surgery, and uh, and I'll be back and faster than ever. We can get Ed DeMilia a new hip. I know, right? I was thinking, <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, I can use a wooden hip. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. You just put... <laughs> I gotta have the old one as a pattern. <laughs> so any, so anyway, so we'll we'll be back on December seventh, and uh, and I'll show off my new hip. I'll do I'll do a jig or something. Well, we'll do listen, a... did everyone hear that? Because okay, earlier he said they, they said they were going to take their shirts off to see if they're showing us the mighty Adam. Like, <laughs> I, I I I have no delusions about my status. <laughs> I, I look. I saw that medal and everything I'm else. Just saying, you guys look are at this a lot thing. Of promises here. That I, that's, that's that's crazy. Um, it's crazy. That's quarter inch steel. Yeah, it's a horseshoe. Yeah, yeah, horseshoe and it's just bent. Bend it. Yeah. <laughs> A human did that. Yeah, look what Jeff did. <laughs> yeah, look at <laughs> exactly, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you for giving me credit when credit is due. <laughs> um, all right, all right so it's been a great show. It has been. Lots been. Of fun. Thank you very much for coming on, everybody. Thank you for having us. Yeah, and thank you, guys. Be sure to stop in at and see the um, Boyer Town Historical Society and make sure you go to see the Mighty Adam this Sunday at, at 4 o'clock we'll at the State Theater. There. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. This has been the cast at Glocker. We're on a lot of Wednesdays at six ish. Uh, tune in at Mac. Oh yeah, tune in at Mac. Tune in at Glocker Realty and Insurance, both on Facebook and YouTube. I'm gonna play the outro. It's been nice to see everyone. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Here we go. Don't forget, folks, we really do need you to subscribe on YouTube, share the show out to your friends, and help us spread the word about what's going down in Boyertown. Thanks for tuning in.